Hey, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online broadcast and worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there will be a word spoken by God today that'll bless and transform and change your life. Hey, y'all, I'm so excited to be back with you guys. I've been on a sabbatical for the past few weeks and um, it was much needed time just to hear, reflect. And to just hear what God is saying and to see and to appreciate what he's done in our lives. Uh, one of the things that I want to also say is happy anniversary to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. This is 15 years. August the 26th marks 15 years from the very first service that we had as a ministry. And uh, we are, I'm just as I was reflecting over the years and over everything um, through the highs, the lows, the successes, the disappointments and just everything attached with it. The spirit of God began to just deal with me and speak to me about some things. And so I'm gonna speak some of these things to you today. And um, before I kind of get into all of that, I just wanna say to all of the people who've had anything to do uh, with this ministry, anything that's served in any way, sown in any way, prayed for us, been there, come to any service, done anything, I just wanna say thank you to pass, present and also future members, partners and supporters. I'm just so thankful for what God has done and is doing. And so God, I'm telling you, I'm so to the point where I've been away for a minute. And so I've been <laughs> kind of building up some things. So I'm just ready to let it rip. But as God has been talking to me, he wanted me to start dealing with this series that I'm going to start um, dealing with today. But, um, before I do that, I just want to speak this word over you that the best is still yet to come, folks. Don't get caught up in the past where you can now enjoy your present and move forward into the future. So many times people get stuck in regret and would have, could have and should have. But God is saying this. This is a new day. I'm the God of seasons. I'm the God that can shift, transform and change. I'm the God that can restore, not just restore to a former state but restore to the intended state, the state that you were always supposed to be in. And so I'm excited for you that even as God began to tell me, I want you to preach prophetically and I want you to begin to declare and to decree over the people. And as you declare and decree over the people, that unction, that anointing, that power will begin to seep, go in, transform and change. It'll provoke, it'll ignite, it'll, it will inspire individuals to do what it is I've created and called for them to do. And so in this season, I'm expecting an explosion of God's grace, power, anointing and favor like we've never seen before. Unprecedented moves of the spirit of God. And God is saying this. He says, you are right in the middle of and you're going to be this catalyst of this new di dispensation, this new generation, this new outpouring that's going to begin to take place. And so he says this. I'm working things in your life for what I've created and called for you to do. So I want you to rest in that and to understand that. And so as we um, move forward for all of our first time visitors, those for your fir very first time logging in, we want you to connect with us. We want you to now let us know. You can go to our website at spiritoffire.us. Uh, you can also log on here on our um, uh, social media platforms and let us know, hey, this is my first time. I I'm glad to connect with you guys. We want to connect with you. We want to interact and engage with you to tell you how much we appreciate you logging in. There are many platforms you can be logging in on today, but we don't believe it's by chance that you're here today. And we're thankful and grateful for you being here today. So we want you to go ahead, log in, let us know that you're connecting with us today. Tell us where you're from. We want to give you a shout out and just say, hey, thank you so much. We have people from other countries that have logged on, other states. And so we're so grateful and so thankful for you tuning in today. All right, y'all. I don't want to waste any more time here. I'm going to dig into this. Let's go ahead, have a word of prayer. And I'm going to release this word for this new series that we're going to deal with. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom and knowledge and good understanding of your word. 
There is no distance in the spirit. I thank you that this grace and anointing will transmit and transfer to the people that are watching, that are hearing, that they are open to receive the engrafted word, which is able to save their soul. And so, Father, we thank you. Your word transforms our thinking. Y'all, your word, Father, causes us to become new men and women, new individuals in you. We thank you right now for your grace that's sufficient for us. We covet the gifts of the spirit to be an operation and demonstration. Holy Spirit, I completely depend on you. You are the teacher. You are the counselor. You are the guide. You are the one ready to give us peace. Now help me with the anointing to teach. Also the prophetic anointing to declare and to decree things and to see them established and to see the light of your favor transform and light up the pathway to go. So, Father, we give you praise in advance for healing, for deliverance, for freedom, for soundness, for wholeness. Glory to God. And we give you praise for it. We give you glory for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you also for these 15 years. We want to thank you for being there with us. We want to thank you for giving us new opportunities and new doors that you're opening up. We want to thank you for the next 15. We want to thank you right now, Father, for gracing us for a great influence in this earth. And Father, we're expecting a supernatural shift, transformation and change for this new season that you're taking us in. So we expect great things. We expect mighty things. And we just want to say thank you for loving us. Thank you, Father. I want to thank you personally that no matter what, you've helped me to keep me in my right mind. I want to thank you that you kept my family together. I want to thank you, Father, how you've loved on us and you manifested yourself to us and for us and through us. Thank you so much, God. And so I'm so appreciative of your hand being upon my life. Thank you for that. Thank you, Father, for raising me up to minister to this generation and to speak life into your people. And I don't take it lightly. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my children. I thank you for our staff. I thank you for everybody that's been involved. I pray right now a special grace and anointing, special manifestation. I pray for harvest over their lives right now, that you will begin to increase them more and more, them, their households, their families. And so we give you praise in advance for it. And we give you glory for it now in the name that's above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, Right now, manifest wherever they are in homes and cars, wherever they are looking on their devices, computers, televisions, wherever they are. I ask that your anointing manifest tangibly where they are today. Bless them in a special way. We give you praise, glory and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, um, today. We're starting a new series and right now is about three parts or so to it, but I'm just going to preach it until I finish it um, until God tells me, OK, that's enough. Because as I've been praying, as I've been just away and just thinking about things, I heard this word and I begin to write down this word. And it's been in my heart for maybe a couple of months, a month or two now that as I begin to write and just begin to write out the notes and write what I was hearing. I heard this one word. I heard this word. Well, I, before I say that, before I say that, before I even get into that, and before I share with you what I'm going uh, to um, talk about and give you my message, my title, yeah, as y'all can tell, I'm just ready to go. I, I've been so, I've been away for a minute, I've been sitting for a minute. And if anybody that's a preacher know when you've been sitting and ain't been able to talk, for a minute, listen, you ready to let it rip. I want us to go to the book of Romans chapter eight before I get, before I tell you what this, uh, my title is. And we're going to read Romans chapter eight, verses 29 through 30 in the New Living Translation. Now, I, I want to tell you this from the beginning. I'm intending on purpose to kind of calm myself down, start slow and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to just, just build and sow this thing into you. Because God wants us to develop. He wants us to grow in some things. And so here in the New Living Translation in Romans 8, 29 and 30, it says this. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. He chose them to become like his son so that his son 
would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. And this is so awesome. So now God knew his people in advance. He chose them to become, to become like his son. So God called us and he chose us to become like his son. And so that, watch this, his son might be the firstborn among, among many brothers and sisters. So Jesus being that, 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 that template to be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters who you and I are now and having chosen them, he called them. So God chose us and he called us. Each and every one of us are chosen. We are chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the presence of him and his in, in the earth. Now watch this. And so now watch this. Having called us, he gave us right standing. That's righteousness, being in right standing with God. We've been made the righteousness of God. And so now having given us right standing, watch this. He gave us also his glory. Now, we see the word glory, even in the book of Genesis, where it's first mentioned, that reference to glory meant material wealth and blessing. It meant God's manifested goodness in the lives of his people. And so now as God began to talk to me and I was just meditating and in prayer and I heard this one word and the title for today and the title for this series is simply becoming. Becoming. Now, I want you to type that out for me. I want you to write that down, becoming, becoming. Now, when we talk about becoming, we're talking about manifesting or demonstrating who we are, who we are, present tense in Christ. And we've been created in God's image but we must be conformed into the image of Christ through the transformation process of the renewing of our minds. So God is saying this, he says, now I've created you in my image. I've created you after my likeness, but now here in this new dispensation, this new Testament, this new Testament saints, when we get born again, we must now be transformed in the book of Romans 12 and two. It says, and don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So he says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Now, in Romans 8, 29, he says he chose us to become like his son. So now we're supposed to become like Jesus. And so now there are three things I want to I'm going to begin to deal with during this series. I'm going to talk about three things, the acts of Jesus, the attitude of Jesus, the aptitude of Jesus. And so the acts, what he did, his attitude, how he treated people, how he functioned, how he flowed, his aptitude, his ability to comprehend, learn to how he thought about things. And so we want to talk about because sometimes when we preach about Jesus, we talk about the works but we don't dive into how he thought. And so God is saying there, there is going to be, as we dive into this, there is, there should be, and there's going to be an explosion of new ideas, concepts, thought patterns, processes. God is saying, I'm about to, okay, here we go. He says, I'm about to upend some things in your life. I'm about to turn some things around, but it's going to be for the good. I'm, I'm, it's, 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 it's time. It's time of things where you prayed for years. You've been laboring for years. Some of you have been crying behind the scenes. And God is saying, I've heard this stuff. I've heard your prayers. I've heard your cries. But there I'm taking you through a transformation chamber to get you in position to receive everything you've been praying for. 
He says, you're about to go through a transitional season where there is going to be a new normal in your life because new patterns of thought are taking place for you to believe different. And then you're going to start acting different. And then you're going to start having different. He says, from this day forward, you might as well go ahead and get ready to be uncomfortable because I'm going to pull things out of you that I've already placed in you for my purpose, for my glory. And you're going to begin to now share in that glory because when the real you shows up, people are going to be like, who is this man? Who is this woman? So I, I don't get ahead of myself. Come on, come on, come on. I got I to gotta stay here. I got to stay on task. I got to stay on point. Now watch this. This word transformation. Now, now he says here, he says, don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, this word transformation. Um, the Greek word is metamorphic. Where we get our word metamorphosis. I've shared this many times. And so now that means a metamorphosis is going to take place and to transform the verb definition of it is to make a thorough or a dramatic change in the form, appearance or character of. So God is about to take you through a dramatic change, a dramatic change in the form, in the appearance or the character. of. OK, I'm hearing something here. I don't care how long you've been a certain way. The way you've been hasn't manifested what you wanted. And so God is saying, I'm going to have to take you through this change. And you can't say stuff like you can't teach your old dog new tricks. He says, you got to get that way of thinking out of you. So in order to receive what you've been believing for, you're going to have to change how you've been doing some stuff. And he says, you're going to have to learn how to adapt well to change and learn how to be fluid, learn how to shift, learn how to think, because God wants to shatter old tradition. See, the, the Bible says this, the traditions of men make the word of God of no effect. Your old way of thinking about it. It can be old ideologies, old concepts, old infrastructures. Old ideas, whatever it is that God needs to change in you, you got to be open to the change now. You have to be receptive to, wait a minute, I've been thinking like this about this area from your marriage to your business endeavors. Because see, some of you can have old antiquated ideas of roles and responsibilities of husbands and wives. And God is saying, because you got to dwell with your wife according to knowledge, you will have to shift. Because just because, and see, this is the thing. God is saying, I'm going to give you wisdom for your situation. I'm going to give you wisdom for your business. I'm going to give you wisdom to know how to function in whatever season you're currently in. He says, but you got to be open to me. Now, let, let's keep going because I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get there just yet. I don't want to spike just yet. Now, how does God, how does God want us to think? How does he want us to think? The book of Matthew 6.33 in the Amplified Version says it like this. It says this. He says, but seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. Now. Understanding God's way of doing is his kingdom, his way of doing. But watch this. He says, and his way of being, his righteousness. Because I was about to call this, this series being versus becoming. Because you're becoming who you are. I know it sounds kind of like an oxymoron to some of you. He says, you are already created in my image, but I need to get your mind to lined up where your spirit already is. And I need you to now begin to heighten your awareness of who you are to transform your thinking to line up. My pastor would say it like this, renew your mind and release from your spirit. 
You're going to need to begin to now renew and change. Watch this, because God called us, remember, the word of the year. We, 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 had the, we passed the midway point. And we'll be going into, we're in the third quarter of this year. And God said that this is a year of kingdom renaissance. I got to keep that before you. That renaissance is God's way, how he functions, how he implements in society, how he functions, his way of doing things, his, his uh, methodology, his principles, his laws that we p- apply to our everyday life so that we can see God's results. I sent out a, t- a text the other day that sometimes, and I think I put it on social media, that is not about um, understanding um, regimentation will bring revelation. That's what it was. Regimentation will bring revelation. When you have a regimentation of doing what God says to do, you will have a revelation of the principles that you're doing. Sometimes people want the revelation before they implement the regimentation. And sometimes you got to reverse it. You got to do it and the understanding will come. You got to be obedient enough to know that God has your best interest at heart. And you can say, you know what? That ain't working. I tried walking in love and that person didn't respond. But see, the reason why God told you to walk in love was not to change them. It was to change you. And you were so focused on changing them that you stopped doing what he told you to do and saying it don't work. And what you do is you go back to your default setting of how you used to think and how you used to do things when you feel as though God's way doesn't work. And so God is saying, you got to stick with it long enough to transform you to become a new man. You transform you to become a new woman. You're a new creation. You are a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. All things are made new. And you got to come into the knowledge of the new you. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, no, no. This, this, this is going to be so good. Because God is taking you through this transformation chamber. And sometimes you got to do one more sit up, one more push up, one more act of kindness, one more time of, of holding your tongue when you've been so used to releasing your tongue. And God, the Holy Ghost telling you to shut up because now your words are becoming so sharp that you can't take back what you say when you release it out of your mouth. And now all of a sudden, both of you, husband and wife, acting funny, both of you cutting up with one another, both of you being touchy and fretful when God says in his word that love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. And now you resenting people that you should be loving. And God is saying this, I need for you to just hold your horses and try. Watch this, because when you try to prove yourself right to others, you show yourself to be wrong to God. Woo, my God. And God is saying, are you more concerned about being right or being right? (laughs) You you, you figure that out. So, yeah, you want to prove yourself as right. But now in God's eyes, you didn't walk in my ways. I told you to hold your tongue. And because you didn't have confidence in my way, you say, God, I'll take care of this. I'll sit you to the side and I'll invite you in when I want you to come in. And God is saying, no, you have to be consistent and have a regimentation of doing what's right because it's right and doing it right. Now, my job in this first session today is to just kind of lay the foundation. Is to get you ready for some of the things we're about to go into because God wants you to become the church. He wants you to be who you are. He wants you to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. He wants you to meet the needs of society. He wants you to come up with creative ideas, innovation and concepts. He wants you to be the forward thinkers in this society. God's think God wants to change and alter your thinking patterns. Man, I'm telling you, oh God. Oh, God, as he changes your thinking patterns, you're going to automatically walk into the will of God for your life. Oh, okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself, because as you renew your mind to do what he says to do, you will walk in his will for your life and you won't have to be concerned about you won't have to be concerned about the will of God and your purpose, because when you start renewing your minds to consistently do what he says to do, you're going to walk right into your purpose. And you're going to be doing what he created you to do. Now watch this. Now, now, now this, ah, 
the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. It reads this out of the new living. He says, so don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. He says, don't throw away your confident trust in God. Don't cast away your confidence. The, the King James says, he says, it, that has great recompense of reward. Don't throw away your confidence. He says, remember, the great reward is going to bring you. He says, patient endurance, patient endurance. Some of y'all may be feeling, Lord, how long? My God, how long? How long is it going to be until I see change? How long is it going to be? And you got to stop and say, wait a minute, God, let me go back and make sure that I'm applying your principles, your word and doing it the way that you gave me to do it. Am I building according to pattern? If I gave you a pattern for a shirt, but then you just go off and try to make your own pattern, you're not going to wind up with the shirt that I gave you the pattern for. And so God is saying, if I'm giving you a pattern for a good life, but you keep neglecting that and saying, I want to do it this way. Now, don't be a listen. Don't be surprised what you're going to wind up with. It makes me think about this. This uh, the Cosby show. There was this particular episode with Theo had his sister make him a shirt. He wanted this. It was a Gordon God trail shirt. And so he brought the original, but his sister was like, I can make it. I can make it. And so the shirt that she ended up giving him and making him was so off. I mean, so far from the pattern. And that's what we do sometimes in our lives. We try to go ahead and fit our pattern in versus God's pattern. And then we try to figure out and try to find out, OK, God, how come it didn't work? Well, it didn't work because you didn't build according to pattern. You didn't acknowledge me in your ways. And I promise you, I'll direct your path. Acknowledging me is not just coming to me in prayer, but it's cracking this book open, looking up scriptures that pertain to your situation. See how I told you to now act in this situation and to consistently apply it to your life. And then transformation is going to take place. Folks, we, we can't make it any simpler than this. If we read it and do it, We'll see it and have it. Now watch this. He says, you'll receive all that he has promised. I like this, the patient endurance. And what you need now is what you need now, patient endurance, so that you will continue to do God's will. After all of these years, God wants to encourage you to continue to do his will. I know right now it may not be the best. It may not be everything that you desired for it to be, but God has an encouraging word for you. Just let's, let's just stay here. What time am I working with? Okay. Now watch this. It can be easy to throw away your confidence in an area where things haven't turned out the way that you thought that they would. But God is saying this simply to you. Don't let go of the confidence that you once had. He says, I need you to be consistent with your confidence. The confident way you were when I first gave that thing to you is the same confidence that you need right now. You need to walk in boldness. You need to walk in confidence and watch this. Watch this. You are in prime. But now this is what the spirit of God gave me. He said that you are in prime position for a come up. And he says, now I heard it like this. Is it's, it's my boy LL Cool J. He had this song. Mama said, knock you out. And it's a, it's a verse in this song. I love it when he starts it off. He said, don't call it a comeback. He said, I've been here for years. Now, some of you are like this. People are going to see why I'm telling you, if you can believe this, that God is saying this. He wants you to begin to receive what he's saying to implement how he says to do it so that when people see you the next time, they're going to see an accelerated version of you, a more developed version of you. And they're going to begin to see you progress right before their very eyes. You're going to progress, progress physically, progress mentally, progress financially. Progress socially, progress in your relationships, progress in every area. There is a progression that is taking place and that is going to take place in your life. Now, watch this. Now, he says this. He said, he said, watch this. When that phrase don't call it a comeback, it's because you never. Now, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. You have to hear what I'm getting ready to say. 
He says, because you never fully exposed and disclosed who you were and who you are. It's almost like, just let me introduce myself to you. I'm going to introduce you to all of the facets of who I am because you've locked yourself into one way of doing things because around you, society is saying that you can only do this or that. You can't be both and. And so God is saying this. I want you to be free to be everything I created you to be. I gave you your personality for a reason. I allowed you to go through certain things in your life to develop you that you as you begin to apply my word to your life. And I brought you out into a new place. He says all of that was for this time. And God has said, don't you dare waste the crisis that you've been going through because you've given up midstream. You just may be, you might be two weeks away from something breakthrough happening. You might be one week away from a breakthrough happening. Joseph was in jail and he didn't realize that he was about to be released into his destiny because listen, he was in jail. The people that he prophesied to while they were in prison with him seemed like they forgot about him. It was two years after they were released and they went to the Pharaoh. But watch this, one of them remembered this man who treated them with kindness while they both were in prison. See, some of you have treated people well over your lives and you don't know who God has been setting you up with. You don't know who the person is that you showed that kindness to because you just did it right because it was right and you did it the right way. God may be setting you up for your, I'm telling you, he may be setting you up for your elevation in your life and you got to go ahead and say, wait a minute, God, what is it that you're doing in me? And you're going to have to be confident in knowing because God gave Joseph a dream many years prior to him coming into it. He saw himself being elevated and he went through hell. He went through being discredited. He went through being lied on. He went through being betrayed. And he went through all of that to become second in command in Egypt to oversee. And where is it that God is taking you? Some of you have cried so many tears that you're tired of crying. And God is saying if you can hang in there and begin to have a freshness. Now, I'm going to ignite you with a fresh fire and a fresh wind to encourage you and to strengthen you. He says, if you will just make it through, you're going to see everything you've gone through and the purpose of it. And you're going to come out without the smell of smoke on you. You got to hang in there. You have to hang in there. Patient endurance is not putting up with it. It's you applying the word while you're going through it because you're going through it. Okay. You don't just sit there and do a bad behavior. You don't sit there and just endure the hard time. No, you go through your time of confession, your time of prayer, your seed time and harvest, your giving, your working, your development and having the right attitude while you're going through it. Some of y'all's attitudes have been worked on so much in this past year and a half. It's like, oh, my God, God, I'm telling you, Satan has tried to mess with your minds. The Holy Ghost has shown me that thing. It's like with Peter. He is desired to sift you as wheat. But God is saying this. And I've been praying for y'all that your faith does not fail you in this season that you're in, because if you don't fail, if you don't quit, if you don't just say some of you planning to quit and God is saying you need to stop that now because your mind is already going to the end from where you are right now. You are already planning to give up, cave in and quit. You are already planning to lose. And God saying, I need you to change your perspective now. The reason why things haven't changed is because you haven't changed. He says you need to change your thinking. You need to change your believing. And as you change your thinking and your believing, your doing will start changing. The reason why it doesn't seem like things are changing, but they only seem like they change for a moment is because transformation has not taken place. The metamorphosis is not taking place. You have not stuck in that word long enough to change you and how you think, to change you and how you receive things, to change you and how you comprehend things. God is saying this, you don't, oh, oh God, I don't want to say it too soon. 
But you're so busy looking at what's going wrong that you have not looked at what's going right. And God is saying, you need to now focus on what I've said in my word, the things I've already started doing, and you need to start rejoicing. Stop putting on a mask. It's time for the mask to come off. God says, I want you to be genuinely happy. I want joy to genuinely rise up in you. And you need to receive it now in the name of Jesus. This is your time to enjoy life, doggone it. Stop moping around. Stop frowning. There's too much power in you. There's too much glory in you. God, listen, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the hope of manifested goodness and greatness. You too strong to quit. You too anointed to be disappointed. You too equipped to be whipped. I'm telling you, this is your time. Rise up in who you are. Stop succumbing to the pressure that Satan is putting on your mind. It's time to fight back. Come on now, where is your fight? Fight back. Declare and decree what God has said. Come on now. Okay, whew. I don't know who that was for. Lord Jesus. My God in heaven. It's time to get your fight back. Get your fight back. Get your fight back. But pastor, I'm tired. God can strengthen you with might by his spirit in your inward man. See, some of you need to go to God. God, strengthen me for this. Help me to overcome this situation, to endure this valley that I'm going through. Strengthen me right now. Holy Ghost, you in me. You abide in me. Change me. Glory to God. Change me, God. See, you're so busy focusing on other folk. Well, this supervisor and this person and my husband and my wife and my children. If this person wouldn't have said that, then I wouldn't have done that. God has said, when are you going to grow up? Take responsibility. Come on, Adam. See, that's how this thing started. A man wouldn't take responsibility for his own action. Oh, Jesus. Come on now. Whew. She cumbre fresh et de camase. Men, I want you to hear me right now. God has dealt with me about men in prayer. It's time for you to go ahead and lead your households in prayer. It's time for you to be intercessors. I'm calling on my men to become intercessors. I'm calling on you to become men of prayer, men of declaration, men of authority, that you speak life, that you right there on the forefront that we protect our families. You know, we protect us by nature. We're providers by nature. And God is saying this, it's time for you to declare and to decree. Now see, as the protector, you take the hits on the front line, but you know how to take authority over those things. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So as a man, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that all is well with my household. Wait a minute, Satan, you attacking my wife? How dare you attack my body? That's bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And God said, the re oh, God will attack what's close. I mean, Satan will attack, watch this, what's closest to your heart. Because if he can get to your heart, he'll suck your strength and he'll bring a distraction to get you off focus. But God said, I'm shifting your focus back into alignment today. There is going to be a supernatural shift of focus again. And God is removing certain distractions off your life and he's getting that enemy off your life. And some of you, it has been a demonic influence, a demonic force, a spirit behind that distraction that has been attacking your mind. And in the name name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come off of them now. Who glory to God. I'm telling you, something, something is hitting in the spirit. This thing is hitting in the spirit. It's hitting in the spirit. You rising up. God is calling armies, the armies of the living God to rise up strong in the earth. He says, this your season, y'all. This is your time. There is going to be such power. Oh, how can I say that, Lord? There's going to be such power with minimal effort that you going to, it's going to be like you can tell that it ain't you doing it. It's going to be so sweatless, the glory manifesting. It's going to be so sweatless, the power showing up that you are becoming who I've always created you to be, says the Lord. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to stick through the process. 
to come into the fullness. Jesus prepared 30 years for three years of ministry. And as his custom was, he went into the temple in the synagogue and he stood up for the read. And he says, whoa, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, but he has anointed me to preach. It has to become your custom. Come on now. He says you have to immerse yourself in me. <sighs> Stop depending on somebody else to do what I told you to do. You get up and pray. You get up and declare. You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Oh, by fickle my city. You better let you better put that bottle down. And stop using it to medicate yourself so you can forget about the pain you're going through to anesthetize the pain. And God is saying, you better go ahead. He says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. See, the reason why you never experienced that, or maybe you have, and you just forgotten how to go back and get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Get in that place where you worship in God. And his power comes upon you. I can't tell you the number of times I've done that. I began to worship God. And all of a sudden, because I was going through such pain, I didn't have to pick up no alcohol. I didn't have to smoke no weed to get high. I got high and drunk off the Holy Ghost. And the power God is going to manifest. There is going to be great manifestations of the power and the presence of God like you've never seen. God said, I'm getting back to manifestations. We're going to see a new move of the charismatic, the new move of the Holy Ghost ghost manifesting a new fresh wind and fire i'm talking about the i'm talking about days of heaven on earth oh man you better come on it is so it is so you got to come on now she called see you got to go ahead you got to know how to worship god in spirit and in truth lord come on in this room transform me and change me See, some stuff, listen, man, I've been in the power and the presence of God. Well, one moment in the presence of God did more than 10 years of counseling could have done. Well, God broke off stuff off in my life. He said, that's the root cause of it. And then and you free from here forevermore. And I'm telling you, God is about, I'm praying. I'm praying that God will visit you, that he will visit your house, that he will visit you in your dreams, that dreams and visions will begin to manifest and he will grant you answers and he will get to the root of your problem and uproot that thing out of you. And there will, oh man, and there will be groanings. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I can't make it through the rest of this. He says, I'm telling you. I'm going to rip out that stuff. I'm going to rip out that hurt. I'm going to rip out that pain. And there is going to come a great balancing of the word and the spirit, says the Lord. He says, watch this, that the word is going to solidify what the spirit manifests. You're going to go through great times of deliverance and freedom, but then you're going to learn how to now keep your healing, keep your deliverance, keep your soundness, keep your wholeness. For when a spirit is cast out of a man, it goes into dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, I'm going to go back to the home from whence I came. And if he finds it empty, swept and garnished, he'll take seven spirits more wicked than himself. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Some of you trying to figure out how come you worse now than you were back then. God is saying, because you never furnished yourself in my word, you never became solidified in who you are. And he says this, this time around, there is freedom. I'm going to deliver you again. And this time around, you are commanded of me, says the Lord, to get into my word, to furnish your thinking with the thoughts of my scriptures and to now meditate day and night and to pour this word in you. And there will be a transformation. And people who didn't want to like being around you, they're going to be drawn to you because of my power, grace and anointing. I command the cigarettes to come out of your hand. I command the weed to come out of 
to your system. I command the effects that, that, yo, that the alcohol has had on your liver. I command a reversal. I command your liver to be healed now in Jesus' name. And who? Oh, your lungs. I command your lungs to breathe freely and clearly. And I command cancerous cells to go now. Yeah. Oh, what is God doing? He's healing every adverse effect of your disobedient act. Woo. Woo. Glory. That's his love. He says, I'm going to give you a jump start in this thing. You better come on, pull on it, pull on it. You better hear what thus say of the Lord. He says, I'm going to help you in this. And he says this. He said, oh, Bethy, oh, Bethy. I'm ready to call out some stuff now. Oh, glory. God is saying this. I'm going to snatch that crap out of you. I'm going to snatch the taste of it out of you. And I'm telling you, the fire of God is about to hit you. The fear of the Lord is about to hit your house. The fear of the Lord is about to hit your mind. And there's going to be a transformation that will take place because many have prayed. He says now, the Lord of Seboth, the Lord of Harvest, is manifesting. Le cumbre, sto cumbre, fretele. Nakamba se te te cumba. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sto cumba. You about to go through transformation? I'm telling you. See, stop fighting against it and receive it. Receive it. Type it out, I receive. Type it out, I receive. Type it out, I receive. Yeah. Uh-huh. And God is saying, I'm restoring honor to this ministry. I'm restoring honor. Ho, befe sikon. Ha, ha. De shetene. De shetene. Oh, glory. Glory to your holy name. He says this. This is the, the whoo, shepradna. Soto, komba, sete, kane, sete. Hale, be setene. Oh, oh, great transformation in our communities. Great transformation in the lives of people we come in contact with. Great transformation. Great transformation. Great transformation. Great change. Great change. Great change. Great change. Great change. Lay hands on the sick and you're going to see them recover. You're going to cast out devils. It's time to practice who we are. It's time to practice. It's time to practice on you laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. It's time to practice. It's time to practice. Watch this for financial miracles that take place. As Jesus is, so are we in this earth. Jesus said stuff like go get a fish and the first fish you catch going to have the money that's needed to pay our taxes. There are going to be supernatural signs and wonders that's going to take place in the financial realm, in this physical realm, in the mental realm. There are going to be people that's going to snap out of it, snap out of it and come into their right minds. And you're going to see these things. And God is saying this. There are some that they snapped under under the pressure. They snapped and gone into mis mental institutions. He says, I'm going and snatching them out in Jesus name. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that's a bonus. In the name of Jesus. I shut down every negative word spoken against us, spoken against you. God going to shut down stuff. I'm telling you, shut it down. He says, I'm the God of justice. And there's going to be justice served. The Bible says when a thief be found, he got to return seven times what he stole. Some of you that have been in bad business dealings because people took advantage of you. I call a sevenfold restoration back to you. You better receive it. No, see, you got to receive this. See, not being mixed with faith, it won't profit you. You got to mix it with faith. You got to believe this thing. Uh-huh. Come on, prophet. Yeah, shepardi, bossy. Hey, glory. Glory. See, trust in the prophet. Believe your Lord, your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophet, you shall prosper. Prosper. You prosper. 
prosper. Glory to God. Glory to God. Shorty, I command your household to be revitalized. I command great energy, great joy, great peace. Come out of, ooh, come out of loader bar into Goshen. Come out of a place of not enough into a place of light, of more than enough. I declare it now. I declare in the name of Jesus, a supernatural shifting of things. Shifting of property from one hand to the next. Shifting of deeds, titles, keys, Father. Shokona from one place to the next. God is saying this. I'm opening up doors that no man can shut. New doors of opportunity. New doors of opportunity. New times, new season, fresh fire. And I speak consistency to you. And it is so. There's so much in me I want to share. This is just to start it off. Brief rastukum. Shibram mashitekan. Shibram mashiton. I was in the spirit not too long ago. And my wife and daughter were in the room with me. And this was an intense time of groaning and just intercession. I went to another place. And I began to sense the transformation and the power, the power that we have to transform. Oh, Lord. There are principalities and powers that are working behind the scenes to bring destruction. But the glorious church. God's desire is to raise up this army. We've always called it the remnant. But it's for any man or woman who believes. Any person who can believe and apply what they are learning. That you're going to see transformation. And you're going to see change. Who? I'm talking about to the point where there need to be, they're going to be, and there needs to be infallible proofs, signs and wonders following what God is saying in your lives so that sinners around you cannot deny that you serve the true and the living God. And there's going to be transformation in the lives of people around you where they're going to see my mighty hand upon you, says the Lord. They, they cannot deny that I'm with you. Even if they don't believe in me, they're going to believe in the God, your God. Watch this. It's almost like your faith is going to become infectious to them. They're going to have faith in your faith. And they're going to say, I, I can't go to God for myself, which they can. But we got to teach them. But now as his representatives, as his ambassadors, they're going to trust the God in you to lay hands on them, to speak into them. And to transform their situation. And because God loves you. See, some of you have been counting people out because they are sinners. Or they haven't acknowledged Jesus. But God is saying, I love them so much. I'm going to show them my goodness through you. So that it will spark them. And watch this. Some of you haven't prayed for some people because you don't think they deserve what they're believing for. But God is saying, I make the sun shine on the just and the unjust. And he says, I'm demonstrating my goodness because it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And there's about to be such a wave of the righteousness of God. The Bible says, awaken to righteousness and sin not. But he says this, the watch this, the righteousness which will manifest itself through active goodness and kindness. When you get active and being good and kind, you're going to see power begin to manifest and flow through you like water. I've seen this personally. And that healing will take place. Glory. Great manifestations of my power. You've limited me, says the Lord. He says, take the limits. Because the box has been removed. The walls have come down. And I am infiltrating areas. I don't know. This is how I'm seeing it. A map of even the U.S. 
And I know you've seen it in movies where when, when missiles are launched and you just see the red lines going here and there. That's how I see it. It's like the box has been, the walls have come down. The containers have come down. And I'm infiltrating every area in the earth for this final outpouring and push. And you're going to see it now. Go, 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 go to nations and preach the gospel in season and out. And you're going to see my power manifest, says the Lord. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you for a new season of your grace. Manifestation. Glory. If you're here, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. It's time to get born again now. I want you to say this. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Whew. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, so thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, and say, say this after me also. Say, now you promise me the gift of the Holy Ghost. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. Fill me now. Fill me with your power, your presence. Help me. Transform me. Change me. Make me new. Now, Robo, open your mouth and begin to pray. Come on. Come by little bullshit there. Out of your belly. Some of you right now. First time in a while you pray. Yeah. Yeah. Open up your mouth now. Some of y'all are like, what's going on? What you doing? Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Glory to God. I'm declaring and decreeing your best days and your blessed days are ahead of you. Your best days and your blessed days are ahead of you. Your best and your blessed are ahead. Enjoy life in abundance to the full until it overflows. This is your season of change and transformation. Hey, folks. We want to also give you an invite to connect and join this ministry. Right now, we're still worshiping virtually, but we are working some things on some things right now before we make any announcements. We want to make sure we solidify and make things, get things in order and in place. But right now, God has us in this season of just this virtual platform. But transformation and change is taking place. No matter where you are. See, listen, you can be in another state, another country. It's perfect for you. That you have a place where you can connect, a place where you can grow and feed off of. I recommend Spirit of Fire Fellowship. If you want to become a partner or a member, partnership, whether it's you belong to another ministry, it's like, you know what, but I love what you guys are doing. I want to connect. I want to support. Listen, you can reach out to us at info at spiritoffirefellowship.us. Info at spiritoffirefellowship.us, I believe. So it's the email address that you can send us your information. You can message us on our social media platforms. We'll have somebody get in contact with you. Listen, we want to tell you, listen, how much we love you and we appreciate you. Listen, every person needs a pastor. Every person needs a place of belonging and connection. This is why God called the Spirit of Our Fellowship. This is not just local, it's global. God said build locally, but think globally. And so one of the things is we have a global vision. And so God is the God of more than enough. He's the God of restoration. He's the God of provision. And I'm just telling you, God is, man, obey the Spirit of God. If he's telling you to connect, connect. Some of you, he working on you. You feeling it. You feel it. You feel it. I'm supposed to connect. <laughs> Obey the spirit of God. We love you guys and appreciate you so much. And at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. I'm trying to do the protocol stuff, but man, the, the anointing is on me. Glory to God. The anointing is on me. Oh, baby. The information is coming up on your screen as to how you can sow and plant in this ministry. And I declare and decree that all is well with you. As you give, it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That God will cause men to give unto your bosom. 
He said, with the same measure that you mean with all, it shall be measured to you again. See, as a tither, God says, I rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its fruit before the time the field save the Lord of hosts. He'll open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing upon you. We thank God for the blessing. Now, tithing was first established before the law, before it was a requirement. See, now, watch this. It was before, after, during, and after the law. Abraham did it willingly. He went to Melchizedek and gave them tithes of all, of the spoil, of the, the conquest that God had given them because God blessed them to have success and victory. <clears throat> he honored God with a tenth. See, the, the, the motivation leaves. The principle remains the same, but the motivation behind it changes. We do it not out of obligation, but out of love, out of appreciation. Let's honor God in our giving today. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. And I'm telling you, the God, El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, the many-breasted one, will begin to transform and change your finances, will cause increase to come, will cause a revelation and a revolution. <laughs> To come into your life. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches are in your house. It is God's design for us to walk in finance. Watch this. I'm going to say it. To be rich. Rich means abundant provision, full supply. Jesus became poor that through his poverty, you might be made rich. He says he's given us the ability to obtain wealth, to establish his covenant in the earth. We see it throughout all the scripture. He doesn't want us to be covetous. That we seeking after it all the time. Uh, see, when you walk in this thing, money cometh to us. And we have, watch this, you have to have great character to have plenty of money. Because money is an amplifier. It will only amplify where you currently are, who you currently are. See, that's why it's important to be faithful over the little, then you'll be ruled over much. So pass the money test. God says it. This is the only place he says, prove me, put me to the test in this area. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, then there won't be room enough to receive it. Can you understand that? You don't have room enough to receive it all. Glory to God. Obey the spirit of God. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. We, <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I, I'm full right now. I'm full right now. God is a great God. He's an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. And I'm believing with you. For some of you that are believing for your children to encounter the power of God and for their lives to be transformed and changed, that there are going to be some that come back and say, Mom, Dad, I've had an encounter with God. He visited me. He showed up. Something has happened in my life. I'm in agreement with you about that. That just came up in me to share that and to say that. Well, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give the benediction. Y'all forgive me. I'm just, man, I'm telling you. There are just times with God that I'm, I'm just, I'm excited in anticipation of the next. Man, we may need to have a healing service or something. Just the time or just impartation. We just, just lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I know we got social distancing and all of this stuff. And we want to be mindful. We want to do those things. It comes to a point. It's going to come to a point, man, that the power is going to have to be demonstrated, just shown up. Well, there are going to be so many infallible proofs that even the government got to recognize it. The power is going to show up. Come on, saints. Don't be afraid. You walking by somebody and they cough and you, you flinching because of that fear that's been pumped in you for over a year and a half, two years almost. Uh, -uh. Every disease, germ, virus, bacteria, infirmity that infiltrates that tries to touch this body dies instantly. You need to start confessing that every day. My immune system is, is extremely strong. My body functions in the perfection of which God created it to function. Speak life. I like Pastor Dollar said, become sound, Psalms 91 equipped. We're equipped. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Glory to God. Well, y'all, I declare and decree the favor of God upon you. I declare and decree the goodness of God upon you. 
I declare and decree that all is well with you and your family and your household in Jesus name. Obey what God tells you to do and watch that the best is yet to come. Love y'all. Praise God for y'all. See you next time. <laughs> Peace. Amen.